Newton's method is a way to approximate numerically solutions of equations of the type f of x equals zero. This picture on the title page illustrates Newton's method. It starts with a, a differentiable function f, and the task is to approximate a solution of the equation f of x equals zero. The green curve of this picture is the graph of the function f. Newton's method starts with an initial guess and then improves that. So let us say that our initial guess is the number x0, which is a negative number in this case. From the point x0 on x-axis, we go to the point x0, f at x0 on the graph of f, and then we draw the line tangent to the graph of f at that point. This line intersects x-axis at the point x1, and this is now our approximation of the solution. Clearly, it is much better than the initial guess x0. Then we repeat this. From the point x1, we go up to the graph of f, we go to the point x1, f at x1, and we draw the line tangent to the graph of f at that point. This line intersects x-axis at the point x2, and this x2 is our next approximation of the solution. Clearly, x2 is already a much better approximation than what x1 was. And this can be repeated as many times as necessary, and the solution can be approximated. Newton's method is sensitive to the choice of the initial guess. If we choose the initial guess in a bad way, the method will not work. In the case of the function f, and in the case of the initial guess x0 indicated here in this picture, we do get um, a good approximation of the solution of the equation f of x equals 0 by Newton's method. x1 is already a much better approximation than what x0 was for the solution of the equation f of x equals 0. And if this process were to be repeated, the approximation would get better, and we could approximate the solution of the equation f of x equals 0 with arbitrarily precision using this initial guess x0. So this initial guess is good. But if we choose for this particular function the initial guess x0 so that it is slightly left to the first initial guess, then we get into trouble, because now our x1 is the intersection point of the red tangent line and the x-axis, and the point x2 would be obtained by, again, going back to the graph of f at the point x1, f at x1, and drawing the line tangent to the graph. The line tangent to that graph would intersect the x-axis at the initial guess x0. So this particular initial guess x0 is bad, because after two iterations we got back to the starting point, and this process will not work. It will not give us a good approximation of the solution of the equation f of x equals 0. It could be even worse. It might happen that uh, starting with an unfortunate initial guess, we would get an improvement of the initial guess, which actually is a much worse approximation of the solution than what x0 was. So this process is sensitive to the choice of the initial guess. How does this work mathematically? The equation of the line tangent to the graph of f at the point x0, f at x0 is uh, y equals f prime at x0 times x minus x0 plus f at x0. This is just uh, the equation of a line with the slope f prime at x0 going through, through the point x0, f at x0. If f prime at x0 is different from 0, then this line is not horizontal and it does intersect x-axis at uh, some point. So assuming that f prime of x0 is different from 0, then the tangent line intersects the x-axis at the point x1, which is obtained by solving the equation 0 equals f prime at x0 times x minus x0 plus f at x0. 
we get that x1 equals uh, x0 minus f at x0 divided by f prime at x0. We may repeat this iteration if at some point our approximation of the solution of the equation f of x equals 0 is the number xn, then we simply improve that approximation by going from the x-axis point xn up to the graph of f and drawing the line tangent to the graph of f at the corresponding point. That line intersects x-axis at the point which is our next iteration or next approximation of the solution. In this case it is clearly much better than what the approximation xn was for the solution of the equation f of x equals 0. So this iteration can be repeated using the formula xn plus 1 equals xn minus f at xn divided by f prime at xn. And the iteration can be performed assuming that f prime at xk is different from 0 for all k. If at some point we run into an approximation xk for which f prime at xk equals 0, then the corresponding tangent line would be horizontal and it either would not intersect x-axis or it would be the x-axis and therefore we could not anymore continue this method. To formalize Newton's method, the input is a differentiable function f and an initial value x0 and a positive number epsilon. This positive number epsilon is used to figure out when to stop the iteration. And the iteration step is the following. We form from the function small case f, the function capital case f, which is defined by setting its value at x to be x minus small case f at x divided by small case f prime at x. And then we set x1 equals capital case f at x0, and iteratively we repeat this xn plus 1 is always capital case f at xn. And we stop when the difference between these two subsequent iterations, xn plus 1 and xn, is less than epsilon. Then we deduce that uh, we do not anymore get a big uh, improvement uh, to the approximation of the solution and the process stops. To illustrate Newton's method, we use that method to approximate uh, cube root of 2 by solving the equation x cubed minus 2 equals 0 numerically. The function small case f to be studied is x cubed minus 2. We approximate the solution to the equation f of x equals 0. In Newton's method we start with such a function small case f and we form the corresponding function capital case f which at x is x minus small case f at x divided by small case f prime at x. We plug in here f of x equals x cubed minus 2. We get that capital case f equals x minus x cubed minus 2 divided by 3 times x squared. This simplifies to 2 times x cubed plus 2 divided by 3 times x squared. So our task was to approximate cube root of 2 by solving numerically the equation x cubed minus 2 equals 0. So the starting function was x cubed minus 2 and the corresponding Newton iteration function capital case f at x is 2 times x cubed plus 2 divided by 3 times x squared. We take as our initial guess x0 2 to be 2. This is our initial approximation for cube root of 2. Not a very good one x1 is computed by evaluating capital case f at x0. x1 is 1.5. x2 is capital case f at x1. It is 1.296296. x3 is capital case f at x2. It is approximately 1.260932. And x4 is capital case f evaluated at x3 and it is approximately 1.259921. If one computes with a computer and higher accuracy, one can observe that in x4, in this approximation x4 
for cube root of 2, all digits shown are already correct. So this method works very well in this case. In this example, our task is to approximate a solution to the equation x cubed minus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0 using Newton's method. We start by forming the corresponding functions, small case f of x equals x cubed minus 2 times x plus 2, and the function capital case f at x is x minus small case f at x divided by small case f prime at x. That is x minus x cubed minus 2 times x plus 2, and that divided by 3 times x squared minus 2. This simplifies to 2 times x cubed minus 2 divided by 3 times x squared minus 2. And if we take as our initial guess x0 equals 0, then x1 is capital case F evaluated at x0. That is capital case F evaluated at 0, which is minus 2 divided by minus 2. So we observe that x1 is just 1. x2 is capital case F evaluated at x1. So it is uh, two, t 2 minus 2 divided by 3 minus 2. But 2 minus 2 is 0. So x2 is 0. And we observe that Newton's method does not work because it does not really improve our first guess uh, for the solution of the equation x cubed minus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0. Let us take a look at this problem graphically. Here is a graph of the function f and the red curve. Our initial guess was x0 equals 0, and we improve that by drawing the line tangent to the graph of f at that corresponding initial guess. This line intersects x-axis at the point x1 equals 1. And then we improve that estimate of the solution of the equation by drawing the corresponding tangent line and we observe that this corresponding tangent line intersects x-axis at the origin. So we started with our estimate x0 equals 0, we got x1 equals 1, and x2 equals 0 again. So this means that the initial guess x0 equals 0 does not work for this particular function. The solution is to take a look at the graph of f at a larger scale. In this picture, one sees the graph of f on the interval from negative 2 to 2. And clearly, the solution to the equation f of x equals 0 is near the value x equals negative 2. So we choose that as our initial guess. We choose x0 is negative 2. Then x1 is computed by drawing the corresponding tangent line and computing the point at which it intersects x-axis. x1 is capital case F evaluated at, at x0 and that is minus 1.8. And x2 is capital case F evaluated at x1 and here we get approximately minus 1.769. And it turns out that in this approximation all digits are already correct. So, starting Newton's method from the initial point x0 equals negative 2 was a good choice, and we got quickly a very good approximation of the solution of the equation x cubed minus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0. But the initial guess x0 equals 0 was unfortunate and did not lead to a result. The equation x to the power 1 over 5 equals 0, that is fifth root of x equals 0, has the unique solution x equals 0. This is easy to find because the equation can be solved by raising both sides to the power 5. Then we get x to the power 1 equals 0 to the power 5, which is just 0. So x equals 0 is the unique solution. Let us pretend that we cannot do this computation. And we would like to find out whether we can approximate this solution by Newton's method. In this particular case, the function small case f is fifth root of x. And this function is not differentiable at x equals 0. This causes problems. The function capital case f at x is x minus small case f at x divided by small case f prime at x, and this is just x minus x to the power 1 over 5 divided by 
derivative of x to the power 1 over 5, which is 1 over 5, times x to the power minus 4 over 5. x to the power 1 over 5 divided by x to the power minus 4 over 5 is same as x to the power 1 over 5 times x to the power 4 over 5. So this simplifies just to x. And the whole expression becomes x minus 5 times x, which is minus 4 times x. So if we start with some initial guess x0, then we compute x1, it is minus 4 times x0. x2 is then 16 times x0, and x3 is minus 48 times x0, and so on. We observe that this works only if our initial guess is the actual solution. So if x0 equals 0, and this means that Newton's method cannot be used in this case. The reason for that is that the function x to the power 1 over 5 is not differentiable at the solution. Newton's method is named after Sir Isaac Newton, an English scientist who lived from 1643 to 1727. He was a physicist, mathematician, astronomer, alchemist, and a theologian. In short, Newton was one of the most prominent scientists of all times.